This is a short introduction to using MATLAB to solve a system of nonlinear equations, more specifically the mass and energy balance that govern evaporation. If you are new to MATLAB, you may want to watch the longer version where I take it more slowly with the coding and do numerous mistakes and show you how to interpret the error messages that MATLAB gives you when you do various programming errors. A schematic view of single effect evaporator looks like this. The feed F is heated up by steam S such that part of it evaporates to form a vapor V free from non-volatile substance. The remaining liquid L leaves the system more concentrated than the feed was. I will use the following exercise and use the function f solve in MATLAB to solve it. The task is about single effect gelatin evaporation and goes like this. Design a single effect evaporator to concentrate one ton per hour of gelatin solution from 5% to 25%. The pressure in the evaporator, that is in the condenser, is one bar and two bar ste pressure steam is used for heating. The feed is at 80 degrees centigrade and the heat capacity for gelatin can be assumed to be the same as for water. Assume that boiling point elevation and heat losses are negligible and determine the area needed if the apparent overall heat transfer coefficient is 1.6 kilowatt per meter in Kelvin. Let's highlight the critical information. Uh, and summarize it. We have that XL is 0.25, XF is 0.05, the temperature of the feed is 80 degrees centigrade, pressure of steam is 2 bar, that is 200 kilopascal, the pressure in the condenser governing the temperature of the V and L flow is 1 bar, that is 100 kilopascal, and finally the K value is 1.6 kilowatt per meter in Kelvin. Now, the mass and energy balances that govern this system look like this. The standard way to solve systems of nonlinear equations numerically is to rewrite them in residual form. That is, to move all the terms to the same side as the equal sign. If I happen to guess correct values for all variables, all these equations should become zero. Please note that you need to have as many equations as you have an unknown. In our case, the unknowns are liquid flow L out, vapor flow V out, steam flow S, and area A. We thus have four unknowns, and we also have four equations. So this looks solvable. Now, if I guess wrong, our equations will not become zero. Thus, in MATLAB, we will put the result of these equations into a vector. Let us call this vector Y. And in my mind, uh, the variable name T is a bit unspecific, so let's rename it to TL, the temperature of the liquid L, which by the way is the same temperature as the temperature of the vapor flow V. We will need to evaluate these equations many times with new guesses, so let us put these equations into a function called evaporator and write a main function that can call the function evaporator. Our function evaporator takes an argument x that contains our guesses of the unknown, the call of the function evaporator must thus give one argument, our guesses. There are many ways to carry out the actual programming of this problem. I, however, prefer to use variable names that I can easily understand. Let us therefore translate our argument vector x into variables called L, V, S and A. In our exercise text we had a number of known parameters. Let us add a second argument, known, that will contain all these parameters. Once again, I prefer to use variables names that I understand, so let us translate our vector with known parameters to variables called xl, xf, and so on. In the main function that calls the function evaporator, we need to tell what the values of our known parameters are. The order in the vector must be the same as we have written in the function evaporator, and we just fill in the values here. We also need to provide a guess of the solution, let us use 1 kg per second as our guess for all fluxes and 100 square meter as our guess for the area. So what is left to do? Well, there are a number of variables in our mass and energy balances that we haven't defined yet. Uh, the two temperatures and all the enthalpies. The temperature of the steam can be calculated from the pressure of the steam using Antoine's equation. Similarly, the temperature TL of the liquid L and the vapor V can be also be calculated from the pressure in the condenser using Antoine's equation. For the enthalpy of the steam, we use a temperature polynom found in the literature, and we use the same equation for the enthalpy of the vapor leaving the system. 
To calculate the enthalpy of the condensate, the feed F and the liquid L, let us simplify and use a constant heat capacity for water and gelatin respectively. Using zero degrees uh, Celsius as a reference temperature, the enthalpy of the condensate simply becomes P water multiplied with the temperature in degrees centigrade for the condensate. For the feed F and the liquid L, we have both water and gelatin. If we assume that the solution is ideal, we can add the enthalpies of water and gelatin together. Thus, we multiply the P for water with 1 minus X and the P for gelatin with X before we multiply with the temperature. Now we seem to be done, so let us run our code. Since our main function has no arguments, we can run the code by clicking the run button above and the output is our resulting residuals, which gives us a feeling of for how wrong our guesses were. Uh, we could not change our guesses and by trial and error fill around until all residuals are zero, but that would take forever. Instead, we use the MATLAB function fsolve. Since the function we want fsolve to iterate has two arguments, we need to tell fsolve which argument it should iterate on. We do that by introducing a placeholder, let's call it unknown, and tell fsolve about it by writing at and then parenthesis and then unknown in the parenthesis. We also need to provide fsolve with an initial guess of the solution. The function fsolve has several outputs. The first one being the solution to the set of equations. Let us call that res. Now, when we run the code, we get the solution to the problem. So the area being 16 square meters here. Now, uh, let us go a bit beyond uh, this task and add a calculation of the specific steam consumption, S divided by Vtot. Now, S is the third position in the vector S, and we only have one vapor flow, since we have a single effect evaporator, and that is position two in the vector S. So we divide one with the other and we run the code and we get this value here. This means that we have a well-functioning evaporator. Uh, the vapor flow V is almost as big as the seam flow. If we decrease the temperature Tf of the feed and rerun, we get the specific uh, steam consumption that is higher. This means that part of the energy delivered by the steam is now used to heat up the feed rather than used to evaporate it. If we instead increase the temperature of the feed, we can actually get a specific uh, steam consumption below 1. In this case, our feed is so hot that when it comes into the evaporator, it flashes. That is, part of the feed evaporates even before being heated by the steam. Now, there are other tricks and things you can do in MATLAB, but let's leave it for here for now. And hope you found this video helpful.